Hi, my name is Kurt Thompson and this is my first video for Metal Mushroom Co. where I take real mushrooms and cast them in metal. First I'd like to give a quick shout out to King of Random for getting uh, my son and I started into metal casting and building our first foundry. Uh, my son Alex for getting me into the hobby as well and Anthill Art for uh, giving me a direction to go with it. That's where I first saw a mushroom being cast and it seemed like a really good idea. So I've been working on this process for a couple of years. I've kind of got it uh, working pretty smoothly. I get pretty consistent results. So let me go through the process with you and let's get started. All right, I'm mixing up some plaster here. This is a plaster sand mix. It's two parts plaster, one part sand. Um, I'm actually gonna mix it up a little on the thick side for the first part because it makes it easier to get uh, the cap of the mushroom to seat down into it. Uh, you want it to set up kind of quick because the mushrooms try to float normally. Um, when it's very liquid they try to float up out of it and so you end up having to keep them pushed down into it to until it kicks off. So mixing it up a little thicker gets it to kick off a little quicker usually and gets the um, gets it seated down in there so it's not floating out. Now the other thing I'm going to do here is, now that I've got the mushrooms out, I'm going to um, take a brush, as this is just a, a little uh, acid brush, and I'm getting the dirt off of it right now. And then I'm going to take the uh, brush and just use it to spread some plaster around the top to make sure it gets into all the nooks, crannies, cracks, crevices of the surface of the mushroom. Uh, this particular mushroom has a lot of uh, little bumps on it. It's a type of amanita that gets these uh, gets this texturing on it and I want to make sure I capture it and I also want to make sure that it doesn't get any air bubbles in it. So I try to get this on there as kind of an initial layer and then once I've got that on I pour it into the mold, get the mold uh, filled up to where I need it and then I'll seat the mushroom down into it kind of just vibrate it a little bit to try to get some of the air out. I'll do a little bit more of that later. But right now I'm just trying to seat it down in without disturbing um, or crushing the cap too much as you're, you know, as you're pushing it in. It's kind of like an umbrella. It wants to try to close a little bit. So you want to work it into the plaster without actually squishing it down into where you crush it. Um, again, that's where I'm just kind of vibrating it a little bit to try to get some of the air bubbles out, which of course is going to make it float up a little bit, so I'll have to push it back down. Um, but once the once I'm satisfied I've got most of the air bubbles out, I'll get it pushed back down and we'll get it set aside and it needs to set up for a little while. All right, that is set up. <clears throat> you can kind of see that there's some divots in there now. And what I do is I put some registration marks in or these little divots to be able to align the mold back up afterwards and it kind of helps keep things together too. Um, so I just use a drill bit while the plaster is still soft or at least a little bit soft usually and put those little uh, divots in. Try to keep them irregular so again so it's easy to line up. If they're all in the same spot and it's a nice round mushroom uh, it gets hard to figure out which one goes where so I try to keep them somewhat irregular. Now I'm putting some release agent in. This is just Vaseline I want to make sure I coat all of the plaster surfaces in the inside of that cardboard just so that the next layer of plaster when it goes in it doesn't bond to the old layer. I want it to stick to the gills so I don't want to try to, I want as much as possible not to get the Vaseline on the gills just on the plaster in the inside of the cardboard. Now I'm going to attach the next piece of cardboard just kind of giving the, um, picking up where the other one left off and wrapping around again and hot gluing that back together. Just takes a few minutes for that to, uh, you know, a few seconds for that to set up usually. And then once that's glued together, I'm going to use a plastic straw to uh, mark the, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, where the stem is. So I'm going to um, take a straw, cut a little piece off, use a little bit of hot glue to attach it to the end of the stem. Once that's attached, then I can go ahead and start mixing up some plaster. 
to do the other uh, half of the mold. So this first, or this second half, first part of the second half, I'm gonna uh, mix up plaster and pour it in just a little bit slow to get it uh, down into the gills and the registration marks and work it in just a little bit and kind of tip it around. Right now I'm just waiting for the uh, glue on the straw to set up so that I can do that. So I'm gonna mix up the plaster now. Once I've got that going, like I said, get it poured in. This batch I can actually go a little uh, a little thinner, so it does. I don't want it as thick because I want it to get down into those um, grooves of the the gills to capture as much of that detail as possible. Um, so I'm going to keep it relatively thin for this uh, step. I'm going to pour a little bit in here, kind of work it around down in. See the straw is still trying to fall over, so I'm trying to work it in, vibrate it a little bit to make sure that it gets down into those gills. And once I'm satisfied, I've got enough in there to allow it to you know sit even and work it down in, and there's no real big bubbles still coming out. I'll go ahead and pour the majority of the rest in. There we go. And we're gonna leave that straw sticking out. That's again, that's what marks where the stem is for the next step which is where I'm going to, um, so once this is sets up, usually takes about, it starts to kick off within 10 or 15 minutes, but um, I want to give it a little bit of time to start to, to set up. And then I use an old chisel. I'm first going to peel off the cardboard. You kind of see this one, I've already um, dug out a hole there. So what I'm doing here is I'm peeling off the cardboard get it out of the mold. Once it's been demolded, I'm gonna take the chisel and just kind of carve a, a big divot out and keep going down, working my way through it until I get down to, um, I'm using, again, just using the straw as a guide to, for depth so that I know how, how deep to go. So I'll keep working my way down through, working around until I get down to the stem stem will then become uh, the pour hole where the uh, metal is being poured through and this hole that I've carved out will act as a kind of like a sprue and, and provide head pressure to keep the metal uh, forced down in so that it gets down into all the grooves of the uh, cap. Um, sometimes the if it's a, a mushroom that's got a very skinny uh, stem you really have to make sure that if that the mold is heated uh, well, otherwise the the metal will literally set start to set up in the uh, within the the stem itself, and you'll never you won't even get it down to the cap. All right, so now we're to the burnout. So I did not capture the uh, oven, so I usually bake these in the oven first. Start out at about 280, do that for usually two and a half to three hours. Then I go up to 325 for an hour to an hour and a half, and then 425 or 430 for another hour and a half. Once those are uh, heated up to the 425 for long enough, then I bring them out here and start the burnout process. So I break the molds apart. Again, at this point, the mushrooms are dried and they come apart pretty easily. Um, you use a blowtorch to do the rest of the burnout and uh, remove the rest of the mushroom material. So once I've got the majority of the, the mushroom burned out, um, you can kind of see how the the cap um, the cap parts here that you can see are a bit of a, like a black color. That's because it's still uh, got a lot of mushroom still uh, in there. So I'm burning all of that out. It's very similar to trying to do like a, a lost wax in this, that you've kind of got to get it all burned out and get it good and clean um, to get that to to get your the end result to come out well, some of my first um, attempts at this, I tried to before I was doing two part molds. I would use like cocktail straws to try to add venting to it, and then try to do the burnout all in the uh, foundry, and I had issues with molds cracking and incomplete burnout, which was kind of cool in some ways, 
when it would leave mushroom material inside, when the metal would go in, it would actually mold up against the, the, the mushroom that was left. So it was kind of like you were seeing an interior skeleton of the, the mushroom, which was neat, but not the not what I was going for. So um, that's kind of what led me to the current process with, with the two part molds. So again, I'm just finishing the burnout here. I've actually uh, added a uh, compressed air, just from an air compressor, blowing air into the uh, different parts to finish getting any last little bits of mushroom out. You can kind of see how the, the caps especially have uh, whitened up a bit more and <clears throat> they uh once they're good and white that's usually the indicator of when everything's ready to go um same thing with the stem i'm gonna you know i burn out both sides both the gill side and the back side where the metal's going to go in because you want the whole thing heated up relatively even again that's why i'm going around and around to all of them um usually try to eyeball down through the stem piece to make sure I can see, you know, if I have a clear line of sight down through it, then I try to make sure that it looks all clean and clear through there. Again, blowing out, blowing it out with air when needed. Um, ideally, when I, when I'm going in here, I should see the flame come all the way out the gill side. All right, next we're going to move them into the sand. So this is just dry silica sand. I'm going to put the molds back together and then seat them down into the sand. Um, and then <clears throat> once they're seated in, so I'm putting them back together now, kind of seat them down in. I can usually get at least two at uh, this size mold. I can usually get two. And because I've got one small one there, I can get a third one into this. Um, both of these rounds, I was able to get all three into one of the pots. These are just some old junk thrift store pots. Um, so again, topping it up with sand, just to kind of hold everything together. I actually, for those taller ones, should have more sand in there. I should be using a taller pot. I risk floating the mold. And that has happened uh, where the, the top section of the mold will just float up out. Um, and so you end up with this real thick cap and it's it's not, it, it happened later, uh, just the other day. So again, pouring the metal in, remainder goes into my cornbread crucible or corn cornbread ingots. And then I'm going to do a demold here. These are the, the first ones I poured. So this is the, um, I'm not even sure what this mushroom is, but it had really cool texture on its, both its stem and its cap. And it, you can kind of see there, it came through really well. Um, they are also very hot still. So that's why I'm going to drop that one. Uh, the next one is the uh, Amanita and it just kind of popped right out there with the Left, leaving the cap piece in, but you can see some of the detail there. It came out pretty well. And I'm going to finish breaking that off. And then the last one is a black footed polypore. And you'll see that the surface finish, this was the three part mold where I added an additional um, plaster section. And you'll see that the surface finish came out really well on it. And you'll see me drop it because it is still, again, really hot. So I hope everybody enjoyed the video. That's the process that I've kind of come up with. Uh, brought in the, uh, these are the two that, that kind of went over in the video. Uh, this is the little Amanita one. I hope that the detail shows there. Kind of see all the bumps and so forth that were on the original mushroom. And even maybe some of the gills up underneath. And then this one is a little, it's called a poly, it's a black footed polypore. And this one was actually done as a three part mold. So the top layer was start part one, this little intermediate layer of the double was part two, and then the final was part three. So same thing, just one more step in there. Um, but I hope that that uh, helps everybody, and hopefully we'll see you again in the future. Thanks.